Today, we're diving into some of the most intriguing theories about One Piece that haven't quite made their way to the U.S. yet. In this video, we'll delve into the still-unveiled past of Zoro and his parents, unravel the truth behind Kuina's death and her possible survival, and explore the historical ties between Shimizuki Village and the Wano country and their impacts. We'll break down these hot topics from Japan in a way that's easy to understand, so make sure you stick around until the end. If this video makes you ponder, could Kuina actually be alive? Then don't forget to hit the like and subscribe. And if you're intrigued by the idea that there's more to Zoro's past than meets the eye, drop a secret in the comments below. Let's get started. Let's talk about Zoro and Sanji. Now, Sanji's childhood has been depicted in detail. On the other hand, Zoro's parents were only briefly mentioned in the author's SBS corner. You might be wondering why Zoro's past hasn't been depicted as thoroughly as Sanji's, despite the detailed portrayal of Sanji's background. No need to worry, it is anticipated that Zoro's past will also be elaborated on in the future. So, if we're to delve into Zoro's past and what aspects might be highlighted? The tale of Kuina plays a crucial role. Kuina was bequeathed the Wado Ichimonji at Ishin Dojo in November, symbolized by Shimatsuki. Her being alive is beyond doubt at this point. She was surely a formidable swordsman, but she felt constrained by her gender. Tragically, it said that she died from a fall down the stairs. Well, there's an evidence suggesting Kuina's survival found in a particular panel. When Zoro remarks, did you see it during the day? The person with a huge face? This skillfully matches to a scene of Kuina's training. Dragon's ship definitely made its way to Shimizuki Village, leading us to believe that the person with a huge face mentioned must be her, Kuina herself. Intertwining in this narrative is Dragon, a character endowed with the ability to change genders. Kuina tearfully expressed her envy of Zoro being a boy, and together they made a promise to compete for the title of the world's greatest swordsman. However, the very next morning following their vow, she was found dead. Now, it's said that her death was attributed to a fall down the stairs, but is it the whole truth? The phrase, humans are fragile, aren't they? might hint at something more profound. Now, to unravel this mystery, we must consider Zoro's overwhelming record against Kuina, boasting 2,001 wins and no losses. The notion of her demise resulting from a mere fall seems implausible given her prowess. What deeper meaning lies behind the remark, humans are fragile? Or could there be an underlying intent in depicting Kuina's death as a fall down the stairs? Well, it makes narrative sense for Zoro's rival to meet a formidable end, but the choice of a fall as the cause raises questions. The mysterious circumstances surrounding her supposed death might just be part of a ghost story with the stairs serving as a thematic element. Yet, the explicit confirmation of Kuina's death by the author, Oda himself, remains understandable within the story's context. Saul was also listed with an age at death, but this was later proven false. Therefore, the possibility that characters once thought dead could still be alive is very real. Sabo was believed to be dead, but it turned out he was alive and part of the Revolutionary Army. Characters presumed dead, especially those associated with genderless character, are often found within the Revolutionary Army. And there are characters who wish to undergo gender transition, the two major themes of death and gender transition, along with affiliation to the Revolutionary Army, fit perfectly with Kuina. The water hen mentioned is a type of bird. The Revolutionary Army includes animals like ducks and crows, so it wouldn't be odd for Kuina to be part of it too. Well, Shimizuki Village's dojo might be modeled after the Gusuku sites and related properties of the Kingdom of Ryuku in Okinawa a World Heritage Site. The location of Shimizuki Village, situated away from the Wano country, aligns well with an Okinawa-like setting in the narrative. In Okinawa, there's a bird called Yanburo Kuina. It's thought that the author Oda named the character Kuina after this bird. The Yanburo Kuina is considered a harbinger of summer, part of the seasonal scenery much like straw hats, one-piece dresses, and the sun. Conversely, Zoro's image is associated with Hokkaido, 
the northernmost region of Japan, while Okinawa is at the southernmost end. The water hen can't fly while the snipe travels far. This could symbolize the presumed dead Kuina and Tashigi who traverses the world with the navy. Now, if Kuina were alive, what would Tashigi represent? The resemblance between Tashigi and Kuina is striking, not just in appearance, but in personality as well. If Kuina is alive, one might speculate Tashigi is Kuina, but why doesn't she remember Zoro? One theory could be that Tashigi is indeed Kuina, but has lost her memory. However, Tashigi's relative weakness compared to Kuina's renowned strength poses a contradiction to the theory they're the same person, especially since Tashigi and Kuina are of different ages. The hypothesis seems implausible. Once a special edition called Episode Zero was distributed, this episode contains past events of various characters. By calculations, the events depicted in Episode Zero happened 22 years ago. Kuina was born 22 years ago. Zoro is currently 21 years old. Toshigi is 23 years old, two years older than Zoro. Thus, Kuina would be one year younger than Toshigi, essentially making them siblings born a year apart. Both sharing Shimizuki blood, they were portrayed as spitting images of each other. Both are descendants of Shimizuki. When we think of closely aged siblings who closely resemble each other, what comes to mind? Well, just like the Mina bird and the Kiwi bird are both birds, Toshigi and Kuina are similar beings, only a year apart in age. I always wondered if they could be sisters. Indeed, all this was depicted in Episode Zero. Looking closely at Episode Zero, when Kuina was born, her father said to her mother, A girl, huh? And the mother responded, It's all right. All the clues lie here. Wano country is known for its male chauvinism. In the Shimizuki family, specifically within the Ishin Dojo, a daughter named Toshigi was born. However, her father, Koshiro, longed for a son. It wasn't long before a second child was on the way. The next child born was Kuina, again a girl. Despite his gentle appearance, their father harbored strong male chauvinism, always desiring a son. This is the kind of man who would comment on the baby's gender immediately after birth. He lamented, another girl? As a result, both daughters were indoctrinated with such ways of thinking. Statements like, it would be better if you were a boy and am I inadequate because I'm a girl? became common. Raised under the same father, their actions and words echoed a similar sentiment. Girls become weaker than boys as they grow up, Kuina once said. Is it because I'm a girl? Toshigi questioned. Fed up with their despicable father, their mother eventually left. Now, this is substantiated by the fact that neither Toshigi nor Kuina's mother has been seen since 22 years prior, as depicted in Episode Zero. It's believed that the mother left home with her older daughter, Toshigi. Toshigi was raised by her mother, and Kuina was by her father. As a result, Toshigi became a sword collector and a bookworm, while Kuina turned out to be more muscular. This contrast stems from their parents being complete opposites in their upbringing. The mother, not valuing masculinity or strength, contrasts with the father, who did. This explains why Toshigi seems relatively weaker, and the differences in their abilities is distinctly portrayed. Each of their favorite foods is hot coffee and milk, which is associated with rest and growth. Remember the scene in Logetown where Zoro acquires a new sword? That's where Toshigi first appears. The relationship between the shop owner, Ipanmatsu, and his wife is the exact opposite of a male chauvinism. In the final chapter, the primary adversaries of the world government, Marines, are expected to be the Revolutionary Army. The confrontation between Toshigi and Kuina seems likely, with Kuina predicted to emerge as the overwhelming victor. Now, Toshigi lacks the strength where Kuina is exceptionally powerful. Moreover, Kuina will be fighting as a man. Then, Zoro will step in to protect Toshigi, a woman, and take on Kuina, a man. The showdown between Zoro and Kuina is anticipated to be a pivotal moment in the narrative. Furthermore, against the backdrop of Wano Country, known for its extreme male chauvinism, a portrayal of a new understanding of gender 
is expected to unfold. That's all for today. Here on this channel, we post popular theories about One Piece from Japan. Hey, if you like One Piece, we'd be happy if you could support us by subscribing to our channel and comment below. Thank you for watching until the end. We'll see you in the next video.